Welcome, I'm Enrico Maraskin. I'm a pediatrician practicing in Morningside in South Africa. This is my passion, little children. I love seeing children in their natural setting, learning, discovering, going to school, playing sport and staying happy. Here we have the vaccine schedule that is uh, produced by the Pediatric Management Group of South Africa and we can see from the schedule, very busy slide and by the time the child gets to 12 years of age we see that there are lots of injections and lots of holes in this poor child's skin. However, on the left hand column we have a long list of illnesses which we're going to consider today. Tuberculosis. The incidence of tuberculosis in South Africa is amongst the highest in the world. In 2013, 450,000 cases of active TB required treatment. 1% of our population develops tuberculosis each year. 80% of the South African population is infected with tuberculosis, but do not necessarily get ill with tuberculosis. So most people have inactive infection, but this makes other individuals susceptible and uh, still able to pick up the illness if they are um, debilitated or unable to contain tuberculosis. Tuberculosis continues to be one of the leading causes of death in South Africa. In more recent times, we're getting more and more resistant tuberculosis which makes the task of eradicating tuberculosis in South Africa an uh, extremely costly and difficult process. In our picture, we have three lungs. The first lung on the left shows a person who's infected but is not actively ill, and the body, because it's immune, is able to keep it at bay. But the minute the body's uh, immune system or is uh, the body's defense mechanisms are decreased, it, the, the tuberculosis bacteria can infect the body, be it through the bloodstream or into the lung directly. On the last picture on the right, we have a lung that's completely infected and obviously would render the patient respiratory compromised. Bloodstream spread can spread to other organs including the kidneys, the intestines and the brain. Once a child experiences a tuberculous infection of the brain, it usually has dire consequences, very difficult to treat and ultimately often leads to brain damage and the child that's not necessarily going to lead a normal happy life that we all want for our children. So, having considered the facts pro and con vaccination, what is your decision? I came across this side on the internet. I consent to being forcibly restrained and injected with multiple viral strains, preservatives and heavy metal adjuvants. Said no baby ever. Having looked at all the facts in our talk, you can see that the effects or side effects of the vaccine are very small if one compares it to the devastating effects of the illnesses that we deal with. If we have a look at the right hand slide, we have a child who's fully immunized and protected against these life changing illnesses. In my opinion, if I had to choose, I would choose to vaccinate my children fully with the knowledge that we are placing these children at risk if we don't vaccinate. So thank you for joining me, uh, Enrico Maraskin, uh, in this uh, discussion. I hope I've uh, shown you the reason for my passion for controlling the disease processes that uh, we vaccinate against and I hope it will give you some insight uh, into making your own decision of whether to vaccinate or not vaccinate.